Good morning. In Country Style Cabinets with a Furniture Flare, Parts 1 and 2, I promised that I would show you how to create a library of crown molding. And this was the molding we produced for Jeremy's cabinet. The upper cabinet anyway, the lower cabinet, the trim was a little simpler. You don't want to do this every time you draw cabinets. I think if you viewed those two videos, you will notice that we spend very little time in cab writer in most of our time in drawing the trim. So what we want to do is create a library of trim so that should we create another model or want to change a model, we can do it and do it easily. In fact, I'm going to demonstrate how we can change this molding from this very ornate molding to a simple uh, S-shape and cove molding. So let's begin by getting rid of this molding. But before we do, I just want to mention something. In part two, I showed you how to rename these parts using the rename component tool. One of the things I didn't show you is how to change the axes of these parts so they have the minimum bounding box. The reason you want the minimum bounding box is because you don't want your cut list to show a big block of wood required for something like this. You don't need that much. So I'll, sh I'll just show you right now how to change the bounding box. And then I'm going to mention some options you have for doing this. All right, let's first of all, let's unlock it. And then we'll right click again and choose Change Axes. And it says there's more than one in the library. Do you want to unlock all of them? Yes. And I'm going to change the axes here. Now watch what happens. I've got this big block of wood that I need right now to make this part. But if I change these axes, Notice now it's just a, a board. Just a board that's the same size or almost the same size as the finished piece. And that saves me an awful lot of material. I didn't do this in part two and I didn't show you how to do it and I didn't do it intentionally. You have options for making a library. The question is do you want to make the library with these big blocks and then fix them later or do you want to make the library with these and make placing parts a little harder later. I'll show you what I mean. Suppose the library has parts like this instead of parts like this and then suppose I want to put that part here. I'm going to erase that one. Suppose now I want to place that part over here. Normally what I would do is copy it using the copy tool. Move it along the green axis and flip along green. Well, that didn't help me. Notice that this flat side is facing out, not inward like it should have been if this were flipped along the green axis. And why is that? Well, let's take a look at where the green axis is. We moved it along the green axis, but we said flip along green. And here's what that means to the component. If you look at the change axis, notice we've changed the axis, the green axis, to this axis right here so that we could adjust the bounding box. So the green axis is no longer useful to us. But the red axis is. So let's let's um, flip let's undo this and flip it along the red axis. Alright now we'll flip along red. And I think that helped a little bit. In fact, I'm sure it did. But the problem is, is now we've got the beveled part in the back. 
the butt joint or the flat joint in the front and we still have the face on the outside but now this is easily fixed we can now rotate this 180 degrees and put it in place So here's the issue. When you make libraries, you want to think about how you want to store the parts. Do you want to store the parts with a non-optimized cut list um, configuration? That is, where we haven't changed the bounding box to be appropriate? Or do we want to store them like this, where when we bring them into the model, we have to think about how we're going to do the flip along and the rotating. I personally like to store them like this and that's how I'm going to do it today but you can skip that step and store them like this. Okay so now what we've done is we have replaced the trim with this oh we haven't done anything yet have we oh so let's get at it all right so that was just a little demonstration about the bounding box but let's now get rid of this trim and bring in the new trim first thing I'm going to do is delete that Delete that and delete that. Now, by the way, one of the things I want to do right now is because I've deleted those components and I want to add some new molding and probably give them the same name as what was here before, I want to delete everything that's in the components library that isn't used in this model. I can do that either with my extension called Purge well, it's not my extension. It's an extension I put, uh, I downloaded and, and, and installed in CabWriter. Or I can go to, and if you don't have that extension, you can go to Window, uh, Model Info, Statistics, and say Purge. And it will purge any of the unused components in the entire model. I'm just going to make sure it was done by using my extension. And it didn't purge any more, so it must have it must have deleted those parts. All right, so now notice if my in-house library of parts my in-house library of parts has all the parts used in this this model. But if I use this little drop-down arrow here, I get a lot of other library of parts or library of components. And one of the things I did was I created a new library with one crown molding in it, this one right here, just for this demonstration. So this is a library that I've added. Right now it's only got one crown molding in it, but at the end of this it's going to have two. So I'll select this, and notice now I've got this new crown molding down here. I'm going to bring it in. Now when you bring in a .skp file, and that's what's in these libraries, nothing but a .skp file, when you bring them in, it brings them in as a component. And right now I've got a lot of subcomponents, or this is a hierarchy or a nested set of components, uh, but it brings them in as one component. In order to get to the other components lower in the nest, I'm going to explode this. And when you explode it, what I've got in the library is a profile here. 
where if I wanted to create the trim for this using the profile, I could do it like I did in part two. But the other thing I can do is use these individual pieces. And when I make a library, I store the pieces that I think I'm always going to need, depending on the type of model I'm building and what's in the model and how things are organized. So, so there may be extra pieces that I'll delete later, but at least I'll have enough to just go ahead and put things in place. And so let's do that right now. What I'm going to do is pick this piece up. At that point right there. and move it to here. Now when I store pieces, my short pieces are usually 13 inches because that's the size of my typical, the depth of my typical carburetor cabinet. So I store them auto, you know, at 13 inches so that I can easily just pick them up and put them right in here. But you never know how long a cabinet's going to be. I store these at 30 inches this particular cabinet, I believe, is 51, so I'm going to have some work to do, but not much. I'm going to pick that part up. Right there. And I'll put that right there. And notice now I've got some work to do. I need to extend this part. Well, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to go into Edit Component Mode. And I'm going to use my Select Tool. And with the Select Tool in the left to right direction, I'm going to select the ends, only the end pieces of this molding. I'm going to pick it up right there, come along that edge, to that point right there. And that's all I need. Okay. Now what I want to do, that's all the pieces I need from this. So I might as well get rid of these. And again, I'll purge everything. Notice this time it got rid of five parts. And I'll want to rename these. I believe this is C2 upper, it is. So I'll enter C2U. I'm going to make this a custom part. And give it a definition name of end crown molding. And I'll call it an instance name of left and crown molding. And I'll protect it. All right, it says I don't have any dictionaries. I ought to go and create one right now. So I will. Notice that in my extended entity info, I don't have any attributes. That's what dictionaries are, is attributes for this um, part. I'll add them. Rough lumber. Whoops. Rough lumber. Maple. I want to resize the parts. 
three quarters of an inch in width and one inch in length. And there we go. I'll do the same thing here. C2U. And I'm going to call it um, front crown molding. Custom part. And again, I'll name the instance name since there's only one in the model. I'll give it the same instance name as a component name, front crown molding. I'll protect it. And now I need to move this one down here. Remember, I can't flip it along the green axis. What I have to do is flip it along the red. And I'll turn it 180 degrees. and put it in place. And lastly, I'll give this an instance name of right crown molding. Now you can see how much easier and quicker that was by taking something out of the library than creating it from scratch like we did in part uh, two. This is much quicker. And I've got a totally new set of molding. Okay. What I want to do now is show you how to create this library. And to do that, I'm going to go back a number of steps. Well, I think I am. Ah, there we go. Okay. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to get myself a cross section. I'm going to clear all layers and bring up the trim. Upper trim, and I don't need this, don't need that, and this one I'm going to explode. Now that I've exploded it, I'm just going to select these front pieces here using the right to left selection and delete them and notice that's left me with a um, a cross section I'm going to copy that using edit copy 
Now I'm going to open up a brand new SketchUp model. There we go. And I'm going to use Edit, Paste. And I want to put this right at the origin. And while I'm at it, I'm going to move a copy of it one foot back. Twelve inches. Okay. This one I'm going to make a component. And I'm going to call that component I'll just call it Jeremy. That'll be the name of the profile. Back here what I want to do is create a path to extrude that profile. I'm going to create my first path of 13 inches, my next path of 30 inches, my next path of 13, again 30, and lastly 13. Okay, now I'm going to select that path. I'll select this. Well, actually, let me do it this way. Using a right to left motion with the select tool, I select only the path. I don't get any of this in the, in the selection. Now with the follow me tool, I create my model. And now what I want to do is very carefully inspect this model and add lines that need to be added. For instance, if this is a miter joint right here, I need this line right here. Likewise, I need this line and this line. and this. Now I'll move around here looking to see what else I need. Oh, one other thing I want to do. Let me back up. I forgot to show you something. Let me back up. Okay. If I look at this profile here and I examine these curves. Notice that curve and that and that are two are three separate pieces. I want them to be one piece. Otherwise, if I go forward here and extrude this, otherwise you get these unwanted lines. Like that line there that line and these three lines here one two three those well that line probably wants to be there but this one doesn't and this one doesn't and that one doesn't and that one doesn't because those are part of smooth curves the only place you want lines is where there's abrupt changes discontinuities we call them so the way to do that is if I go back to the profile is download from the net. Actually, I think it's, I believe it's in the warehouse. Download the weld 
tool. It welds pieces of lines together, pieces, well, pieces of lines together. Curves are actually a bunch of lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that line, that curve, and that line, and I'm going to weld those. Now notice they're one. This is already one, I believe. This is one, two, three, down to this discontinuity. So I'll weld those together. This is one, two, three, down to this discontinuity. I'll weld those together. And that's it. That's all I need to do. Now, I can, again, using a right to left motion, select the path, select the follow me tool, extrude this, and go back to adding the lines I was adding before I stopped and showed you what I was doing wrong. If you don't do this, you're going to say you're going to create yourself a lot of problems later. Now come in here and examine this. Notice there's a little line right here missing. I'll add that. And likewise, there's a line here missing. You want to zoom in close because you, you want to get that end point, not that. Both are end points, but one is the true end. Okay, now that's going to save us a lot of work. Now what I want to do is look at this from the top. And I'm going to use my select tool again in a right to left motion. I'm going to select, nope, this time I'm going to use a left to right motion. By using the left to right motion, only pieces that are completely within the bounding box will be selected. So now I've selected this piece. I'm going to make it a component. Normally you want this little box checked, but in this case I don't. I don't want to replace the selection with the component. And the reason is, it's a technical thing with the way SketchUp works, but if I were to have this checked and I made this a component, it would replace these pieces with the component, which means I wouldn't have these lines left for this part when I want to make this a component. So leave it unchecked for the moment, even though normally you want it to be checked. And I'm going to call this I'm 
I'm going to call this Jeremy 101. Just, it's just a number. It's my first part. But I'm starting off with 100, and it's my first part. Jeremy 101. Again, I'm going to use the right, um, left to right motion. Pick just this. Make a component. By the way, I'll make things a little faster. I'll copy this. Make this a component. 103. Make this a component. 104. Make this a component. 105. Okay. So now I've made a component out of all these things. What I want to do now is look at this, this direction, blow this up. First of all, get rid of my axes here. Blow this up as big as I can. Oh, wait. Before I do that, let me go back. Remember I told you I like to store these with the bounding box corrected. I'm going to correct one of them online at least. And the others I might do offline. Uh, because once you've seen this, it's there's no change. Okay, so I go to the change axis. Come along here on the red axis. Come down here on the green. That one's done. Uh, I'll do all of these quickly. Come along here on the red axis. And the green. Lastly, okay, so now they're all appropriate. Now let's do this again. I want to blow this up as much as I can. And now I want to save this file, but where do I want to save it? Well, where I want to save it, if I go to Window, Preferences, I want to save it. See where it says Components? I want to save it in this Crown Molding folder along with my other one. So on the PC, what I can do is do this, copy that, now close this. 
and I'll say file, save as. Paste that in there. And here I'm just going to call this Jeremy. Uh, this got changed again. There we go. Jeremy. Save. Uh, what's happening here is it's um, not taking uh, this time it'll take it I guess I had to hit return and now let's see if it's really there let's go to my moldings whoops Wrong one. Let's go to crown moldings. Lo and behold, I have both of them. I have this one and Jeremy. This one was Simon Cove. This is Jeremy. So there we go. Now, anytime, anytime we want to use these cove moldings, we can do it very simply. So let me close this and just show you that what we really have here are just skip files, nothing more than skip files. And I'm going to provide them for you so you will have two cove moldings you can put in your library. Okay, I think we're going to wind it up here. Have a good day. I'll see you in the next post.